This time we're training much more than, than 3,000. The Heritage Organization, Center for Renewing America, all these different organizations that are conservative run MAGA are training tens of thousands. Of 3,000 will be the first wave that hits that will really staff the Trump government at every level, from Department of Energy, Department of Defense. Every, every billet that needs to be filled will be filled pretty quickly in the, uh, in the second term. I like to watch foreign news networks. I, I don't watch any news, cable news in the, in the U.S. But the foreign news networks are very interesting. The way that they cover what's happening in the United States. And sometimes they have guests on. And what the guests say, American guests on foreign networks, what they say to a foreign audience is often different to what they might say to a U.S. network if they would even give an interview to, you, to a U.S. network. And in the case of Steve Bannon, he went on recently to a British channel and was interviewed directly about the plans to redraw the map of American federal government in Donald Trump's image. Project 2025, the Heritage Foundation, this document that we've been talking about, that we've encouraged you to take a look at and to realize that they are very and deadly serious about their plan to basically blow up the whole system in November this year. When you win the presidency, you immediately get 3,000 political appointees to, to, to mm. basically work with and control 2.2 million federal employees, about 2.5 in the military, and about 16 million contractors. The, when you win the presidency, you get 3,000 uh, political appointees immediately, and you get 1,000 that have to be Senate confirmed. We're training many more than the 3,000. As you know, in 16, when we came from behind and won, we weren't really ready with the depth of talent you needed and the number of people uh, trained up to take over really the executive branch. So Steve Bannon, who, you know, is one of Donald Trump's confidants and has his War Room podcast that Trump watches and is a conspiracy theorist, is a far-right nationalist who is somebody that is going out of his way to cause as much chaos and drama in the U.S., who doesn't care for migrants, uh, immigrants, doesn't care for asylum seekers, doesn't care for minorities, doesn't care for women, somebody who is ultimately the architect of Trumpism, is freely admitting on British television that the plan for Project 2025 is underway, that the training of 3,000 people is underway, and that beyond those 3,000 people, there will be 40,000 people who will all be ready to step into these public service roles, into the, into the civil service, and to enact the far-right extreme MAGA agenda that we have been hearing about. We have what's called the administrative state that was never uh, structured in our constitution. It's kind of taken over the government. It's these bureaucrats. Uh, it's in every form of American life. And yes, and the rogue element of that, the national security, the intelligence, law enforcement, that's the rogue element of that, is what we call the deep state. The first uh, line of attack is the administrative state. And certainly President Trump is going to replace members of the CIA, DNI, all that, which, which he has the prerogative to do. Those are the 1,000 Senate-confirmed positions. The last time round, the, the first four years was like a practice run. And, and it ended with... January 6 and with Trump trying to overturn the result of the election. It was chaotic. It was a mess. There was a scandal and a drama every single day coming out of the Oval Office. Well, part of that it was because there were some people with a sense of decency and humanity and, and true patriots who were able to hold Trump back from some of his most extreme things. I mean, he wanted to have military parades in, in Washington, like Kim Jong-un or, or, or like President Xi Jinping. I mean, you know, he puts these dictators on a pedestal and wants to be like them and, and wants to be able to stand there and be proud of his tanks and of the military might of the United States, whilst at the same time being completely isolationist in his, in his kind of geopolitical views. And so we were lucky that we had some senior members of the White House John Kelly, for example, who was briefly chief of staff, who were able to hold Donald Trump back. That's not going to happen this time around. This time around, Trump's White House learned its lesson, and they are 
guaranteeing that they will install loyalists in every position, in heads, as heads of every department, to make sure that their plan to turn the United States into a, a, a far-right, Christian, nationalist, anti-women, anti-minorities, anti-gay institution will work this time. They're, they know what they want to get, and this time they claim that they know how they're going to get it. And so by firing everybody and replacing them with loyalists, that is their, their secret. And, and they're not making a secret of it, you know. It, it, it's published. Bannon is talking about it openly. And he's saying that, you know, these training programs, this recruitment drive is already underway. So the vote in November has become even more important, not because you know, the, the, the vote you're voting for democracy over dictatorship. But the dictatorship is this time going to be even more acute. The, the, the actual practice of their authoritarian regime is going to be perfected in a way that it wasn't before. We never thought it could happen in the United States. We, we've seen it in other countries and in history, the, the, the rise of fascism, the rise of a dictator who invariably get elected. You know, people elect dictators and then they take over and their true authoritarianism comes to the fore. But, you know, this time the, the, the Trump campaign team have a meticulous plan to ensure that their agenda will be achieved within the first few weeks of the presidency. You know, think of all the protests that went on when Trump was in office not just on the inauguration day, but for many, many months, the Women's March, the marches and the, and the demonstrations of minority groups begging to be seen, begging to be heard and to be considered. Trump wants to do away with the Affordable Care Act. He has no plans to replace it. He wants to do away with Medicare and Social Security. He has a, a plan for the US that is about being white, cisgender. He is interested only in people that have already pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. It's those are the people he's interested in. If you are marginalized, if you are poor, you will not feature in the, in the Donald Trump presidency. And, and, and that is really the great tragedy, you know, because to be socially mobile is, is part of the American story. And Trump wants to stop that dead in its tracks. President Trump will look to deconstruct the administrative state. The Supreme Court's already ended this right now, uh, reviewing cases about downsizing this bureaucracy. I'm Anthony Davis. You can hear me every day on the 5 Minute News podcast, also on Uncovered every Wednesday with Ron Filipkowski and on The Weekend Show every Sunday with Midas Touch. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.